Hey everybody, um, I want to talk today about um, why reading the Bible is painful sometimes and why it should be painful if you're doing it right. Um, for scripture references, in case you're right out of the gate, you've got your Bible like you should and you want to read where we're going to be. Um, we're going to be in James chapter 1 and we're also going to go to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Um, but let's start in Hebrews. So Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that the, um, the Word of God is like a two-edged sword, okay? And if you can picture a two-edged sword, you know that it cuts one way, and it also cuts going back the other way. It means it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It is um, something that pierces um, through our marrow, through our spirit, it divides, um, uh, let me read it because I'm butchering it right now. So let me see, uh, Hebrews 4, chap uh, chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit. So the soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. Your spirit is the part of you that was created to live forever. Their joints and the marrow. Um, so your joints are kind of a more external uh, thing they're between uh, they're between bones and muscles and ligaments and things and also the marrow is inside the bone okay so joints in the marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight not everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account and if you haven't ever considered that even your thoughts are under the scrutiny of God, then just take a minute because this, the word of God is so important. It's so important for this because we spend a lot of time, or most people do, spend a lot of time thinking, well, I'm a good person. And the, the, the qualification for being a good person is usually you're not out murdering people um, involved in sex trafficking, you're not injuring others, you're just kind of going about your daily thing, you don't bother anybody else. This this good person thing, the Word of God is always going to challenge that. Not because you're a terrible thing and you are worthless and, you know, you've gum on the bottom of God's shoe, but because you need to realize that there's so much more to learn in order for you to grow and mature. Whether you became a Christian five seconds ago or whether you've been a Christian walking with God for the last 40 years, there's always something to learn, but you cannot learn it unless you get into the Word of God and read where it's painful. You ha if, we all know where our weaknesses are. If you know anything about the Word of God and what, what God's commandments are for us as human beings, if you know anything about it, then you're very aware that you fall short of them. Okay, and, and whether or not you're actively um, injuring other people or um, doing this, that, or the other thing, you are an imperfect human being. You, you don't have it all figured out, and there's always room for improvement, and the way you do that is in the Word of God. Um, I'll, I'll give some examples. So even though we may not be all murderers that are watching this, um, we know where our weaknesses are. Like um, some of us struggle, struggle with sexual immorality, whether in action or even in thought. Um, an impure thought life is a falling short of uh, what God calls us to be. Even, even if you're just driving along in the car and, you, and somebody does something in this road rage moment and you are thinking things about that other person, you have to take every thought captive and that's not what we're called to be. It, it's that specific. Um, whether you, what about failure in marriages or relationships? Um, selfishness. This is something that everybody deals with. Selfishness. Despising the poor or certain people groups. Um, certain people from certain religions. Um, undisciplined desires. It could be as simple as food. Um, if you are undisciplined in your eating, that is against the will of God for your life. He wants you to have discipline in all areas of your life and hold him um, to, at the top of everything. 
Um, money. Some of us struggle with money and debt and racking up crazy bills. And some of us have like a mixture of all these things. And this is not to, to try and um, tell you what your sin is. But the truth is that we're all broken regardless of whether or not we're good people. Okay. Um, think about John chapter 15. It's one of my favorite verses. Um, I always end up going back to it. But Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches, right? So Jesus is the vine, and we who love Jesus and are attached to him are the branches. Those that produce fruit, he prunes so that it will produce more and better fruit. I have another video on this somewhere. I don't know, but it's one of my favorite verses. Pruning, is, so God, uh, the, uh, Father God, Jehovah, is the, um, is the gardener with the shears, right? Jesus is the vine. We're the branches that are producing fruit because we're attached to the vine, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, all the things. And Jesus and God comes along and he says, ah, this branch is doing good. And he prunes that branch. That requires the cutting off of certain things. And if you've never experienced having something cut off of you, sometimes that's painful. Not everything that God does in order to shape your character and to make you better is going to feel good in the moment. Some of it's easier than others to let go. Oh, you want me to let go of Netflix binging at 10 o'clock at night? Okay, well, that's, that's not too painful. That's just a recalibration of how I spend my evening, right? But then there are other things that require maybe people to be cut out. And that's a little more painful. Maybe it require, I, I don't know what it's going to require for you. Maybe it's, maybe it's a drug addiction or even um, smoking, even something as small as smoking because it's unhealthy for your body. Um, things like that can be painful. Um, go now with me to James chapter one. Uh, we're in verse 23. And I love this because it likens the word of God to a mirror. Okay. Okay, here, James chapter 1, verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. It says, don't just listen to it. Don't just read the word of God. Okay. Do what it says. Don't just listen to the word of God. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Let's take this metaphor here for a minute. So if I'm the kind of person that reads the Bible yet never puts it into action, it is just like seeing and recognizing who I really am closing the book and forgetting immediately everything that I've just learned. Immediately who I am. The word of God is supposed to convict you, to cut you sometimes, to make those painful areas irritate a little bit. It's supposed to irritate your spirit because you are not as you will be once Jesus returns and everything you know, everything goes back to the way that it was originally intended to be. So you right now are not perfect and neither am I. The word of God and getting the word of God into us is to help sharpen us. And sometimes it's a painful process of reading something and realizing that you are falling way short. It's called conviction and it's a gift. It is a blessing. And if you despise the correction of the Lord, then you will never be maturing and making yourself better. I'm a parent, so I understand these things because I have small children and sometimes they require correction. Sometimes it's gentle correction. And sometimes there are consequences in the corrections because I really need them to learn that lesson or they're going to hurt themselves or somebody else or do something unsafe. Who knows what? Who knows how God is trying to correct you? But if there's a painful place in your life, if there's something that's being irritated by the word of God, and so you choose to run away from it, just know that the process of bringing you back to that might be more irritation and more correction. Whereas if you will turn and face the consequence, if you will turn and face the pruning and say, okay, I hear you. You're asking me to cut this out. You're asking me to do this. You're asking me to give the something up and just say, all right, 
I'm going to do that. It will go infinitely better for you than if you try to fight that and run from it. So it's, it says, read the word of God, do what it says. Don't just read it and know how to regurgitate it and, you know, talk to it, uh, talk to people about it. You can't just be able to like recite. That has nothing to do with allowing the word of God to affect who you are. So here, here it goes into this. So it's like, if you read the word of God and you don't actually do what it says, do what it convicts you of, you close the book, you walk away, it's like forgetting who you are. It made no impact on you whatsoever. But whoever looks intently into perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Life lessons, y'all. This is good stuff. Um, so I, I just... I want to remind you that the word of God is offensive to your flesh. This fleshly thing that, that doesn't last forever, this part of you is going gonna, is gonna to die one day or end up, you know, caught up with the Lord, um, God willing. But it, this thing perishes. The stuff on the inside is what you're feeding with the word of God. And you've got to train yourself. In all, all, all scripture is God breathed, God inspired um, and good for the training in righteousness. Righteousness is something you train yourself to do. Taking every thought captive is something you're in control of, not God. Don't keep asking God to do the work for you because some of it is on you to do. If you have kind of wandering eyes on the beach and you're the kind of person that likes to look head to toe at all the people and you know that God has been convicting you that you're not supposed to be checking out people and thinking things about them that you're thinking in your thought life, then you need to keep your eyes averted from those people. Or not go to the beach. <laughs> but, I, I, I mean, these are, these are small examples, but the, but the training of yourself, your thought life, your eyes, it is better for you to cut your stinking hand off because it's causing you to sin than it is it, it, then it would be for you to have the whole of you thrown into the pit of hell, right? Like that's a big deal. A lot of people would not cut their hand off if it wanted to do something it wasn't supposed to. Think about your eyes. The thing I just said about eyes on the beach, wandering eyes, and you know your eyes are kind of lusting after people's bodies. Maybe that's a problem for you. Maybe it's not. But it says it's better for you to pull your eye out than it is for the whole of you to be cast into hell because you can't keep yourself disciplined. I mean, that's, that's some pretty heavy phrasing right there. And I don't, please, I am not telling you to chop your hands off or to pull your eyes out. They're metaphorical, but they should give you an amount of gravity that God has placed upon his, expect his expectation for us to be training ourselves to be disciplined. Disciplined spiritually from what we read in the Word of God. So that's enough of that for now. Um... Let's just pray real quick. Um, Lord God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for the people that are going to watch this video. And I ask that you would convict us where we need to feel conviction and that you would give us the word of God that sharpens and molds us, that prunes us, that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And you would cut us where we need to be cut so that we can become better, so that we can be more spiritually mature, so that we do not walk away from the Bible forgetting who we are and who you've made us to be. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name.